Ahoy, my friends, Ryder here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today, I am jumping into the EX2 Leviathan fight. I'm going to be showing you guys how to take down this brand new summon in the game. So, that being said, let's jump over to the actual fight itself. Let's take a quick look before we jump over to the PowerPoint and go through all of the mechanics that you're going to need to know in order to take this down. I will say that this fight is extremely similar to the EX1 fight. Uh, it's just a little bit harder. Uh, Leviathan hits harder, he takes less damage, that kind of stuff. But the fight itself, the mechanics are more or less the same. All right, so here, right here for Leviathan, it's the same guy right here, weak to lightning element physical attacks. He's gonna use powerful water element of magic abilities. Some that you wanna keep in mind is Gyre Spoom or Spume. I guess. This is going to do an AoE magic defense down on the team. Good to know. He does that right at the beginning. He's going to do Briny Bellow, which is a very powerful single target attack. Um, we're going to counter that by using Zack's uh, Enhanced Sword, I think, or Crystal Sword. The one with the single target heal on that. And essentially, he's going to have Tidal Roar, which is an AoE that doesn't do that much damage. He's going to have Tidal Wave, which he's going to cast... Uh, I believe twice in the fight. You want to beat him before he does the one at the very end. And other than that, I think that's more or less his attacks and abilities. Now, I'm going to be running this team right here. 302,000 power over 260,000 recommended. It is going to be Red 13, Zack, and Cloud. But that being said, let's jump over to the PowerPoint and check out the mechanics of the fight itself. All right, guys, so here we are in the PowerPoint for the Leviathan EX2 fight. I gave this fight a difficulty level of 7 out of 10. I do think that this is, uh, I'd say, the easiest of the EX2 fights. And one thing I really like about this is that you don't need any recent banner uh, gear in order to beat this fight. You can beat this with gear that came out you know, months ago. Now, if you're a newer player and you missed out on some of those uh, costumes, this might be something to put off until we get a new physical lightning arcanum weapon, which I guarantee you guys is not far away. Um, but for those of you that have the right setup, and it doesn't have to be exactly the team that I'm running, but can more or less do these things, which is magic attack break, a Physical defense down is really nice. Zack really comes in clutch on this fight because he can break magic attack and physical defense down with Twinkling Star. Uh, you're going to need a lightning in peril, a strong uh, physical lightning DPS at the same time, an AoE magic defense buffer. Uh, so those are the main things that you need for this fight. All right, so Leviathan is going to have two sigils, same as EX1, X and Triangle. Uh, and I will say that it's, I wrote right here that Sigil Boost is necessary for at least one of the two, but in this fight, in comparison to the EX1, it's going to be a lot easier to run uh, two double Sigil Boosters. So for example, for me, I'm running Red 13 Seaside Caller. That has X Sigil Boost in the third Materia slot, and I'm running Murasame on Cloud, which has Triangle Sigil Boost in the third slot. That means that Cloud and Red 13 can both respectively break their own sigils by themselves which frees up the third character and during my fight you'll see that i spend about the first 75 percent of the sigil phase healing and then i re-break magic attack and physical defense so that when it breaks he's already broken on physical defense down so i just need to imperil once and then it's immediately back to full dps all right, so uh, Leviathan is going to be weak to lightning, specifically physical. What to know, he's going to have high magic attack. He's going to break magic defense with Gyre Spoom or Spume, however you say it. All right, he has two long sigil phases. However, the first one is much longer than the second one. All right, so just keep that in mind. He has powerful single target attacks, mainly an attack called Briny Bellow. This attack is going to hit for a lot, and he's only ever going to target the character with the lowest HP when he does this attack. So make sure your primary DPS is not the person with the lowest HP on your team, okay? It needs to be someone that preferably has really high water resistance and 
good defensive capacity. So I'm going to show you guys, I made red 13, that character for me in this. And I'm going to show you how I built him to survive these briny bellows. All right. Uh, the first half of the battle is I think harder than the second. Um, although at the end it can get really cruxy there at the end. So I will say that although this is true in the EX one, uh, in this one, it kind of evens out and the whole battle kind of becomes the same semblance of difficulty. The best characters are going to be Cloud, Red 13, Zack, Yuffie, and Lucia. Matt can also work really well. Um, however, Zack just comes in too clutch with the Twinkling Star, the, uh, the AoE Cura in that third slot. It's just a really good weapon for this fight. All right, so jumping over, my team strategy. I will be running Cloud as my primary DPS, Pure Lightning DPS with a Triangle Sigil Breaker boost. That's all Cloud is doing this entire fight, guys, and casting Ramu. Red 13 is going to be doing a couple things. He's going to be my Magic Defense AoE buffer and my Imperiler, all right? And he's going to be my X Sigil Break booster, right? And then in his off time, let's say Imperil is maxed, he's going to be doing off DPS with Thundara Blow. Last but not least, we have Zack. He is my primary healer slash breaker. So he's going to be breaking magic attack and physical defense, which is really handy throughout this fight. He's going to be doing AOE healing and single target healing, which is also really handy in this fight. All right. So the opening sequence is going to be exactly the same as EX1. You must break the Maelstrom before he goes into Tidal Wave, guys. So for me, my strategy is that I ignore the magic defense down at the start. I don't heal it with Sanctuary. I don't heal it with Red 13's magic defense up. All right, we're going to opt for pure DPS. Breaking this bar is going to increase the time that Tidal Wave takes to cast, and it's going to reduce the damage that it does. Once Tidal Wave hits, and this is going to be like right when Tidal Wave is, basically once you get through Tidal Wave, that's the end of phase one, we are going to use all three limit breaks to increase our ATB and interrupt his next attacks. So basically once Tidal Wave hits, he's going to try to cast Tidal Roar, right? We're going to interrupt it with Sled Fang. Then when he tries to cast it again, we're going to interrupt it with Apocalypse. Then when he tries to cast it again, we're going to interrupt it with Judgment Bolt. During this point in time, I'm going to make sure that he's fully broken, fully imperiled, and I'm getting off as much damage as I can, as we can. All right? Note, Leviathan will always tar single target the character with the lowest HP. All right? So don't make that your DPS. It's very important in this fight. All right. So the fight strategy continued. The first sigil phase, right? Because once you run out of limit breaks and summons in order to interrupt him, he is going to get off that tidal roar. So you're going to block going into that immediately Cura. That's going to take you straight into his first sigil phase. 55x, 55 triangle. Cloud and Red 13 are going to be individually breaking their own sigils. And with Zack, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on just healing. Now, it's important during this phase that when Red 13 and Cloud are getting their ATB up to 3, you don't switch over to the blue necessarily, right? Once they cast, then I'll then I'll switch blue, I'll heal, etc. Because if they somehow, for some reason, I know they typically won't um, cast when it's blue, but if they do, it will only take one point off the sigil instead of five, which is a pain. It might be three instead of five since they had five already. Um, but essentially, once it gets down to around 20 sigils left, I'm going to start using Zack's uh, Twinkling Star ability to make sure that by the time this Sigil phase is done, Leviathan is broken, that he is fully magic attack broken and fully physical defense debuffed. All right? So that's important right here. Upon breaking the Sigil phase, we're going to imperil him and just force DPS on this dude. Uh, we're going to interrupt his next three attacks all in a row right with limit breaks one at a time so his next attack after breaking the sigil phase once he like gets out of his stagger is going to be briny bellow it's a very fast casting ability so we're going to sled fang or apocalypse the idea right here is there is a hp threshold now i'm not exactly sure exactly what it is but there is a way to not have him cast briny bellow at all and I think it's if you get him down to like 35% by this point, 35 or 40%. But the goal is to get him past 50%, right? Because I've had him, if he hits you with Briny Bellow and he kills one of your characters, he will cast it again. And if he kills another one of your characters, he will cast it again. So you have to survive that Briny Bellow. Um, and it looks like he'll only cast it one time if he's under 50% HP. So after that sigil phase, 
you're going to interrupt his his briny bellow one at a time with all three of your limit breaks and your summons while doing as much dps as you can to him in the process all right eventually he will get it off and as soon as he does he's going to immediately or very soon after go into maelstrom his lightning bar is going to refill and we are going to be at this point trying to make sure that his debuffs are always there, his imperil is always there, and breaking this bar down as fast as you can, because partially into this bar, he's going to cast Tidal Roar again, which is going to take us into the second Sigil phase right here. All right? So right here, damage as much as you can, but very shortly into this phase, Leviathan will launch into the second Sigil phase. This Sigil phase is smaller. It's only about 25 instead of 55. So keep your HP up, and towards the end, just like the first, rebreak his magic attack and physical defense down, then resume DPS upon the break. All right, going into the last part of the fight. In the last phase of the fight, after the second Sigil phase, Leviathan will eventually come out of his stagger, and he's going to want to cast Briny Bellow, okay? Before he does this, and this is important to note, is this paragraph, guys. He will do this. This is cast Briny Bellow. He will cast Briny Bellow right after Gyre Spoon, which will debuff magic defense for the team. It's very important that during this DPS phase, you're casting magic defense up before the Gyre Spoon, right? So we're going to take the magic defense up. He's going to cast Gyre Spoon. It's going to reduce our magic defense. And then we're going to cast our magic defense AoE one more time, okay? Super important because we need the character that he hits with his Briny Bellow right here um to survive and the maelstrom is really hard to have broken by this point so depending on how high his lightning bar is he's gonna hit really hard with that briny bellow however the moment he hits you with, with that briny bellow he's gonna cast another one now if he kills your first character with the first one he's gonna kill a second character with the second one but if you survive that first briny bellow then he'll cast it one more time and kill that character, leaving your DPS alive. And in, in my case, it's going to leave Cloud alive with my physical defense debuffer, which is Zack. All right. So he will immediately recast Briny Bellow a second time. But if your DPS is not your lowest HP character, then the character who dies is not really that big of a deal. The fight should be over if his HP is low enough at this point. At this point, you're just going to go ham and kill him. He's going to start casting Tidal Wave. You need to kill him before that tidal wave goes off. All right, so that's a breakdown of the mechanics. Now I'm going to go back into the game. I'm going to go over the team build, and then we're going to get into this fight. All right, let's go. All right, guys, here we are. This is my team. I'm going to fully break it down for you guys before we go into the EX2 battle itself. As you guys can see, I am running Red 13, Zack, and Cloud. Red 13 as my primary imperiler and magic defense buffer. Zack as my magic attack breaker slash physical defense breaker with a single target healing weapon right here. And Cloud is going to be our all-star lightning DPS in this fight. So Red 13, I'm going to be running Seaside Aloha, boost HP, and physical attack, but just uh, just put whatever you can that's going to help him where he needs it. I'm going to be running Sledfang here, which breaks physical and magic attack. Seaside Caller, which is super important in this fight, as you can see for the X Sigil Break booster right there. And it's a uh, one cast high in peril for lightning if you have it at OB6. Then I'm going to be running Sleek Caller for the magic defense AoE to the team. For Zack, I'm going to be running his buff debuff extension costume. Apocalypse as his limit break, super important. It's very fast casting and it does two times damage to a single target. We're going to be running Twinkling Star. This is the MVP weapon of the fight. It breaks magic attack and physical defense. And as long as you have it at OB6, it can go to high on the second cast. On top of that, the support material has all cure in the third slot, which is going to allow him to be our AoE healer in the team without actually needing an AoE healer, all right? Then in his second slot, we're gonna have the Enhanced Sword Z, really potent, single target, 131% healing potency right here. Overall, really good sword for healing from the Briny Bellow. Last but not least, we have Cloud Strife, Murasame Battle Garb right here, Judgment Bolt from Ramu, Murasame at OB10 right here, and I'm running the Stream Saber, mostly just for the boost physical attack to all allies right here, which is really helpful. Now, in terms of Materia, I'm running Akira in the first slot for all three characters. I'm running a Thundara Blow on Red 13, so give him a strong one. All right. Zach, I'm running a Thundara Blow right here just in case. And for Cloud, I'm just running a Stat Stick for physical attack. 
Of course, we have the X sigil break on Red 13, the triangle sigil break on Cloud, and on Zac, we have the Cura again in the third slot for the AoE heal. I put this cure here. I don't want Zac at any point in time trying to break sigils in this fight. So I didn't give him any means to do that. Plus this has good healing specs on it because I want his healing to be good. Now, if we take a look at the individual characters right here, this is going to be a uh, red 13. He's going to be at 86,000 power, 10.5 K HP, 2.5 K physical attack, 147 physical defense and 158 magic defense. His R abilities are going to be focusing HP, a little bit of physical uh, attack, uh, magic defense at four right here, lightning potency at four and water resistance at three guys, which is really important along with the physical attack to all allies. Now for his, uh, for his sub weapons right here, I'm going to be running Dawn's Prayers for the boost physical defense, magic defense. I'm running another one of those uh, for essentially what this is doing is giving him high magic defense without actually raising his HP because I wanted Red 13 to be my character that's tanking the briny bellows and you need to choose a character that you want to do that, especially one that you don't mind if they die at the end and then as long as your DPS and someone else is alive that can finish off the rest of the fight. In my last weapon hand right here, I have the Rifle of Levin at OB6 with Water Resist 34. All right, so that's going to conclude Red 13. Jumping over to Zach right here. He's going to be at 86,000 power, 11.7k HP, 2.2k physical attack, 125 physical defense, and 118 magic defense with 2.2k healing. His R abilities are going to be HP at 7, Magic Defense at 2, Healing at 6, Water Resist at 3. He's got some Ability Potency, Physical Ability Potency. He's got some Limit Break Potency and some Buff Debuff Extension right there as well. For his sub weapons, we have the Chocobo Staff, Healing and Magic Defense, the Guard Stick, Healing and Limit Break Potency, and the Ramu Staff for Boost, Water Resist, and HP. And just note his HP higher than Red 13. Last but not least, we have Cloud Strife. 129,000 power, 10.7k HP, 4.2k physical attack, 121 physical defense, 110 magic defense, so a full-blown DPS right here. His R abilities are going to be focusing HP level 5, physical attack maxed. He's got a lightning potency at level 8, along with the arcanum right here, and the boost physical attack to all allies. His sub weapons are going to be the crystal gloves right here for the HP lightning potency. We're going to have the broadsword axis for the physical attack lightning potency. And last but not least, the SSR 1976 for the HP lightning potency right here. Cloud is going to be also barely sitting above Red 13's HP threshold, which is exactly where we want him to be. Now that being said, let's get into this EX2 Leviathan fight and let's get the clear all right guys here we are going into the ex2 leviathan fight i switched my camera to the top right corner so that you guys can see the stats on zach down here or whoever i'm controlling let me know if you guys like that better i'm going to start off the fight with dual onslaught and power fang switch over to cloud he is going to block the dire spoon right here all right and then right when Zack and Red 13 get up in ATB, I'm going to switch very quickly over to them, then back to Cloud before he attacks so that I can get two of his attacks in while uh, Leviathan is basically fully broken right now. Zack doesn't need to do anything at this point. He is fully p uh, physical defense broken. I'm just going to heal the Briny Bellow single target attack on Red 13 and just continue to do as much damage as I can. He's fully imperiled, so Red 13 can switch to Thundara Blow right here. All right, there we go. And going to get off another hit on Cloud right here. Going to heal this next Briny Bella right there. And looking really good right here. Going to switch back to Dual Onslaught in order to fully break the magic attack right here. Uh, we'll get off Power Fang so that everyone's doing more damage on the Lightning. All right, here we go. Looking really good. So I am just going to do one more dual onslaught, Thunderstrike right here, and uh, we're going to pop the Mono Ward right here in a second. Cloud is going to get off one more Thunderstrike, then we're going to switch over to Zack, and he is going to block this attack, and we're going to heal right after it. That is going to conclude phase one of the Leviathan fight. All right, so I'm going to heal with the Cure All right there. At this point... We're going to interrupt this attack right here, and we're going to interrupt it three times in a row with all three limit breaks. What's important is to get Cloud's limit break, or summon in this case, 
all the way to max during this point in time. All right, so it's going to be tough because he needs two more casts right here in order to do it. So we're going to block this next tidal wave right here. And on the next one, I need to make sure I do a fire blow with Cloud. All right, just in order to get off the next Judgment Bolt. All right, there we go. I'll Power Fang. Cloud's going to get off this next attack right here. All right, that's going to get us Judgment Bolt. All right which is going to let us block it for the third time. Now, the next time he does it, it's going to take us into his first sigil phase. All right. So at this point in time, I'm going to switch over to Zack. And we are going to prepare to take the blow. All right. And then heal from it. It's going to happen right here. And that's going to take us straight into the sigil phase. And that is the best way to enter this sigil phase right here. At this point in time, you're just going to be healing while Cloud and Red 13 do damage. Uh, the best time to switch over and heal is right after they've both casted. So like, for example, right now would be ideal. Okay. But essentially, as this sigil break phase starts to come to an end, I'm going to start using dual onslaught on Zack in order to... Uh, fully take down the physical defense for the next part of the fight right here. All right, there we go. Cloud and Red 13 just doing their thing and doing a great job of doing it right here. I'm going to block this next tidal wave right here and heal from it. All right, so we're looking really good. Everyone's at around 80% HP. Okay, I'm going to get off one more heal on everybody. All right, and now I'm going to start doing dual onslaught with Zack. All right, so as you guys will see here, I'm going to lower Leviathan's magic attack, start prepping his physical defense. All right, so here we go. We're looking really good right here. Okay, their triangle is almost broken. X is almost broken as well. All right, it's down to two. Looking super, super solid. And we're going to dual Onslaught right here. And then we're going to go straight into the Imperil. All right. After that, Cloud's just going to start doing Lightning Strike as much as possible, as much damage as we can possibly do. He's fully broken, so Red 13 is free to do whatever he wants right here. I'm going to get off one heal. And we are going to interrupt this Briny Bellow right here, guys. It's about to come here in a second. All right, there it is. It's a very fast cast, so you got to be watching for it. All right? I'm going to interrupt it three times in a row, okay? Just so you guys know. That's the first one. The goal here is to get as much damage done as possible on Leviathan, all right? So I'm going to try and get two hits in right here and a Power Fang. And we're going to Sled Fang right here. Hopefully, we, got, we did get off the new Imperil, all right? So that's perfect. All right, so he's fully broken right now. Zack is going to get off a dual onslaught. And now we're just going to prepare for the Judgment Bolt right here. All right. Boom. We're going to use that. Hopefully the Thunder and Peril stuck around. I saw it ticking right before I did this. Okay. After this goes off, I am going to hit the Thunder and Peril up one more time with Red 13. Okay, so Red 13 is going to do that. Cloud is going to Murasame. And Zack is going to prepare to heal from this Briny Briar right here. Or Briny Bellow. All right, there we go. Now he's going into Greater Aquatic Focus. And we're just going to be focusing as much damage right here as we can, guys. All right, so here comes the first title, Roar. All right, there we go. Just trying to do as much damage right here as we can. Going into the next Sigil phase, okay, which comes with that Tidal Roar. All right, I need to get off a heal. There we go. Ooh, looking really close right here, but we should be in the clear, hopefully. All right, here comes another one. I'm going to block that. All right, there we go. And getting very close to taking down this sigil phase right here. All right, here we go. Looking pretty close. I'm going to get off this heal on Cloud. Boom. Super, super close right there, guys. Uh, not as clean as some of the other runs I've done. 
but it worked, so we're cruising right now. Gonna get off the second uh, imperil right here, and we're just going to do as much damage as we can right now, guys, all right? I'm gonna get off an AoE heal, and we're gonna just start to uh, break his attacks or interrupt him with each of these things once again. All right, so there's the Sled Fang. We'll interrupt the two. All right, now the goal is to break this Maelstrom as soon as we can. All right, we need to get his physical defense broken right here. Here comes the Gyre Spoon. All right, we're going to interrupt that. We still have Judgment Bolt, so we're looking good, but we have to do a good amount of damage before Tidal Wave comes out right here. So this is where you really need to like capitalize on your debuffs and get off as much damage as you can right here all right so there we go going into thunder strike we'll re-up the imperil we'll also re-up the dual onslaught right here we're gonna block the gyre spoon right now boom all right trying to get as much atb as we can guys all right this is it this is where it really comes down to it All right, at this point, I'm going to use Mono Ward on Red 13. We're going to keep on Thunder Striking right now. And we're going to block this Gyre Spoon right here. All right, we're going to Dual Onslaught. We're going to Mono Ward again. All right, just to survive that Briny Bellows right there. Okay, he's going to double cast it and take out Red 13. Okay, but now he's going to start going into his Tidal Wave cast. But luckily, uh, we should be okay right here as long as Cloud stays alive. Uh, the thing is, since we were able to survive the first Briny uh, Bellow on Red 13, then the second one ended up killing him and not another person. All right, so here we go. Just going to use that, switch back over to Cloud, do some more damage, and the fight should be more or less in the bag right here, guys. And there you have it. That is the Leviathan EX2 fight. Not perfectly clean, but the idea right there in that last phase is like, as you're interrupting him and as you get, as you break out of that second sigil, right? And you start to move into the last end of the fight, he goes into Maelstrom again, the lightning bar comes up. So you're trying to beat that lightning bar. Um, but then I feel like the tricky part of this fight is keeping your debuffs on Leviathan the entire time. So that's really the hardest part. It's just making sure that you're not wasting ATB, you know, casting dual onslaught when you already have it at max. These are things that even I need to work on, you know, and these are things that I'm constantly seeing and trying to improve in my own gameplay in Ever Crisis is that, you know, with these hard fights, it's easy to let it feel like everything's just flying past you. And if you really just like try to slow it down and take a breath, you'll realize that on one time speed, it's not that fast, but sometimes it can feel like two times speed in the heat of battle, you know? And so essentially, like right there at the end, the crux move was using Mono Ward before the first Gyre Spoon in order to make it because Gyre Spoon is going to magic defense break the entire team, right? So by using it first, then it reduced our magic defense. Then I used it again, right? Then he did Briny Bellow on Red 13. And luckily, since he was fully broken in magic attack and we had the magic defense up, we were able to survive. Unfortunately, he double casts that move really fast. However, what was the make it or break it moment is that if he would have killed Red 13 with the first Briny Bellow, then he would have just turned around and killed Cloud right after that. And Zack is not strong enough to win this fight, right? So essentially you have to survive the first Briny Bellow, then let that character go or survive both if possible, because then once he does the two Briny Bellows right there, then he's going to have a little bit of a calm phase before starting to charge Tidal Wave, right? Which gives you that last little semblance of time to finally kill this motherfucker. Excuse my language. <laughs> but honestly, super, super fun fight. Um, like I said, I am always happy to help you guys in the comments. I always do. I answer every single one of them. Sometimes it takes me an hour first thing in the morning. Uh, after like studying Spanish, I'll, I'll go through and just start replying to comments. Sometimes it takes me like literally upwards of an hour. So 
That being said, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you guys have any concerns, if your team is different, et cetera. Um, if you do have more complex questions, I do recommend coming to join the Curseborn Discord, our Discord community. There is a link to join, an invitation link in the description of all my videos. We, would happy, we are happy to have you guys. We have a huge community of players that are awesome, awesome players, very helpful, very positive, and just can help you get to where you want to be in Ever Crisis. So that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video today, if it's helping you get that EX2 clear, don't forget to drop a like on the video and don't forget to subscribe for future Ever Crisis content to come in the future. That being said, I wish you guys the best of luck. Crush this dude out there. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Take care and peace.